Facebook is becoming a critical tool in the global political arena. As we're seeing with the Arab Spring and the protests around the Middle East, social media makes it easier than ever for people to rapidly communicate what's happening, to raise awareness, and to organize. As we approach an election year here in the US, we're seeing Facebook increasingly used as a channel to transmit political messages, engage citizens, build campaigns, and spread propaganda. Facebook really represents a battleground for ideas, revolutions, uh, labor unions. Um, they are empowered through Facebook, but it also is a battlefield for control systems, for authorities, for uh, police, for um, governments, and for um, rulers to engage and try and suppress or control dissent as well. Facebook is exerting pressure on governments by acting as an accelerant of communication and an amplifier of social unrest, indignation, and revolution. Because Facebook gives ordinary people a broadcast platform, if those people live in an autocracy or you know, a, a, a repressive political system, which unfortunately a very large percentage of humanity does, um, it, gives, it, it, it does suggest that they have a tool to you know, address that, that situation that they never had before. What started as a technology for casual socializing is increasingly becoming a catalyst for political action. Facebook enables uh, very powerful amounts of information sharing, whether it's video or pictures, um, with its creation of pages, uh, whether it's uh, sharing of information back and forth between different people. Uh, that's immensely disruptive to closed societies. So Facebook around the world has become a place that, that either central authority has banned and blocked or has become a place where, where people can, can organize collective action. Facebook is probably going to increasingly have to uh, deal with governments trying to turn it off. And that's already the case in China, uh, Vietnam, Syria, Cuba, and you know, North, North Korea. While platforms that enable the real-time sharing of information can be a threat to the powers that be, they also provide those authorities a convenient, centralized tool for monitoring populations. There's a whole other side of government as well, uh, which can and is using uh, Facebook as a, a Skinner box, so to speak, uh, as a, something where you can watch uh, citizens very carefully, um, and uh, also to, to pull in open source intelligence. To intelligence agencies, it's a, a great way to find out who knows who. You know, the secret police have been in Facebook all along, uh, and they have an entire bureau of the secret police in Egypt that devotes itself to nothing but Facebook surveillance and infiltration. Um, and, um, and covert operations. Wouldn't Stalin have loved Facebook? I mean, you know, you, you want to control a country, you want to control the people. You just got to find out who, who the key people are. And, um, you know, find who the key people are and remove them. Having this kind of information of who trusts who can be very dangerous in, in the wrong hands. As we move forward into the future, will Facebook predominantly be used for political empowerment or mass manipulation? Um, so, it, I mean, like so many different kinds of technology uh, platforms, uh, certain technologies, period, uh, it's, it's a neutral form in some ways with the sense that uh, governments can use it for good or can use it for evil. You can see both the uh, concerns uh, about how autocratic societies will use um, these kinds of, of environments to track citizens and also how that they can use them to listen better to citizens, respond to them, engage them, uh, create more dynamic forms of uh, citizen to government interactions. To add your voice to the Future of Facebook Open Foresight Project, go to futureoffacebook.com. <laughs>